Hello, it's Stuart, the Unrepented Atheist, and um, this is the first time that I've done anything with Aaron Ra. I know something of him. I've seen him on the Atheist Experience with Matt Dillahunty, and I visited his channel now and again. Um, I didn't actually realize he was so popular. He's got more subscribers than Matt Dillahunty and the line put together, so that was uh, interesting to me. I'm going to be paying a lot more attention to his channel. I do respect the fact that he goes out into the streets and engages with Christians, and in fact, he's made me and shamed me into realizing that um, I should probably start doing the same. I'm probably going to purchase a body cam or something like that, and maybe go to some of these Jehovah's Witnesses who are literally just around the corner from where I live and engage with them. But in the meantime, let's see uh, how this goes with uh, Aaron Ra, and he's speaking to some Jehovah's Witnesses. The sound quality is not too good, so I'll try and help with a bit of uh, transcription when it's needed. Were you interested in now these uh, Jehovah's Witnesses carts, this is America, and they've got exactly the same thing in the UK. I don't know, they must, um, I mean, they must come from a common source. Uh, they're very practical, I, I must say. Why people believe in religion is what I think Yeah, so I don't know if you heard it. He asked, Aaron asked, why do people believe in religion? And the answer was, it gives them hope. I've got that very booklet, The Origin of Life. I actually took it, I made a video, I went through it, I cri you know, critiqued it. Uh, so again, they've got the same booklets here in the UK. Yeah, so how does it give them hope? What, uh, what, do you, what question do you want answered? What, it would, I, yeah, it's the same one still. The Bible talks about a time where we will see the things that we're seeing in the world today. The Bible also says that snakes can talk. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, that the Jehovah's Witness refers to the Bible. Uh, and uh, Aaron's come back and said, well, the Bible also says that snakes can talk. Okay, he's quite um, he's quite challenging. I would be, I would be a little bit more kind of, you know, uh, probably subtle with the way that I do things. I wouldn't go I wouldn't go straight for the kill. I would kind of you know build up a bit of a rapport first. And that the world was flooded, we know that didn't happen. The Bible says a lot of things we know are not true. So what is the part where you get home? I believe what the Bible says. You don't know what is wrong. I don't believe it's wrong. You know snakes can't talk. There's no way for snake to talk. Well, if there's a God, um, if there's a God, then I suppose that uh, he could conjure up a talking snake. So if these people believe in God, then they would believe that that's possible. They have, they have a glottis. I mean, they, they don't have vocal cords. There's no way a snake can talk. Magic is not real. So, so magic fruit, blessings, curses, they're both positive or negative enchantments. Enchantments are magic. So is water bending, necromancy, all of that stuff's in the Bible. The Bible talks about a lot of magic. It talks about wizards, talks about blessings, curses. So where's the hope part? What are you hoping for? I don't know if you got that. Aaron asked, what are you hoping for? Do you want to read the scripture in the Bible that talks about the hope of belief? Well, I do Bible study every week. I haven't seen anything that I could, that I could possibly interpret as hope for someone. So where is that? Well, that's why I asked. Like in Revelation 21, 3 and 4, it talks about a time when the things that we see existing in the world today will exist. Give me an example. That really surprises me that they haven't actually got a Bible. He's just um, cited Revelation verses from a quotation, not a quotation. He cited from Revelation, but he hasn't actually said, he, they haven't got a Bible there to look it up. What do you believe? You tell them why you believe what you believe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, I, I, I try to be tentative. The most important thing for me is truth. 
and therefore I don't want to be fooled into believing anything that is not evidently true. I leave to the obvious. If it's not evidently true, if it's something you can't confirm, well then you take the position that maybe it's true and maybe it isn't. But in the case of the Bible, we know for absolutely certain Adam and Eve is a parable based on elder mythology from Mesopotamia primarily. We know that well, Aaron Ra there is appealing to certainty. He's saying we absolutely know it's certain that the Adam and Eve story was a fable. Um, I don't know with absolute certainty that that is the case. Um, I don't have any reason to believe in the Adam and Eve story, but I wouldn't assert with absolute certainty that it's not true. So I would have a slightly different approach there. I think um, I'm getting that Aaron Ra is a hard atheist. The global flood never happened, the Tower of Babel never happened, the Exodus never happened. I've interviewed a whole lot of Bible scholars. That stuff ain't real. That's what you believe. That's not what I believe. It's what we can demonstrate. We can prove the global flood never happened. And then if it did happen, that would only be a blight against the idea of God. And so would hell. Do you guys believe in hell? I don't believe in eternal torment, no. I'm glad of that. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I'm not, I need to equate myself with what Jehovah's Witnesses actually believe. He said he doesn't believe in eternal torment, unless he means he doesn't believe in it for himself. That's one of the fortunate things about the way I was raised. I was raised by a Mormon family. The, the scriptures talk about hell. The scriptures clearly believe in hell, but my family didn't. So they, they just, I didn't get a lot of that fire and brimstone. Now, my wife, she was raised by... I find it quite interesting that he's, you know, I love body language and he's left quite a buffer zone there, quite a significant, there's quite a significant space between them. Um, again, my, my approach, if I do this, and, and in fact, maybe I will do it, I would be standing closer. I would, trying to, I would be trying to get a bit more kind of um, intimacy and maybe a little bit of trust so we could have a uh, sort of more constructive conversation. These men are standing in quite a defensive way. You can see them. They're standing very stiff. They're kind of uh, a little bit tense and they're, they're being quite defensive. Divided family, Catholic on one side, Protestant on the other, both telling you both sides of the family to go to hell. There's no justification whatsoever. And she had a problem recovering from that, coming away from that, because it gets so ingrained, the fear, the terror, is wholly abusive. So I'm glad you guys don't believe in that. But you still believe the snakes can talk. That's the problem. Isn't it? We believe what the Bible says. Why? It's Why don't you believe what the Bhagavad Gita says? It's true. It's not true. It's lies. It's true. No, it's demonstrable. The truth is what the facts are, what we can show to be true. We can show that the Bible is not true. Now you do. Well, if you guys have more questions, you can always visit the website. Um, but something that we don't like to do is debate, you know, because... That's what I want. I want to do that. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. He said that something that we don't like to do is debate. I want to know why you guys are bought into this. Well, we're not bought into it. Like I said, you can always go and visit our website. You're not bought into it. You're not standing out here pushing placards. That you're, you're, not, you're not here right now. I'm just, this is an illusion. Well, like I said, you can always go to the website if you have more questions. And who's going to they're not really selling their religion very well. If I go into shop, if I if I see a product in a shop window that I like, and I go in, and um, uh, I ask them about this product, I'm interested in it. Can you tell me something about it? Uh, convince me that it's worth buying. Then obviously, a good retail assistant will try to sell the product, and they're not really doing that. They're just saying, oh visit the website, you know, take a leaflet and read it. They're not selling their religion. Answer the problem, I get a reason with the website. Well, something that you could do, I mean, it's just like anything you could... Well, it seems very strange to me, is because they actually look quite business-like, but they're not behaving in, in a business-like manner. This gentleman who's arrived, the third one, this smaller chap, uh, I mean, he looks very business-like. He looks like, you know, a banker or a lawyer or something like that, but he's not... He's not giving Aaron any reason to think that this religion is worth actually taking on board. Okay, let's keep going. Sit down, read the read whatever it is, right? Because how do we acknowledge? How research. do we? It's part of research. That's yeah. all I do. Yeah. So 
so what is the whatever it is that it's supposed to be? Well, it's just information, website. yeah, stuff in, on the website. Okay. Because what I said about the truth is what the facts are, what you show to be true, or right? not whatever else we might assume or imagine the honor instead of that. Okay. So every religion proclaims their collection of lies to be the absolute truth and revealed word of one true God, even if they can't agree on who the God is. So none of that is true. Therefore. They can't show, no religion can show that they are any truer than every other one. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. Uh, we ourselves, right, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we don't try to enforce any of these So, I mean, we respect your opinions. We do. Well, he's saying there that uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't enforce their beliefs on anybody, um, you know, which is fine. I've always, I've always noticed that Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't have this uh, sort of evangelistic approach. They more or less just stand uh, looking friendly and they've got their leaflets. And I mean, they don't even say anything to you when you take a leaflet. They just sort of smile and they don't really engage at all. So, yeah, they are very laid back for certain. So, I mean, if you don't believe in, in the Bible, it, it's okay. I believe right. in reason, so that okay. means I want to reason with you. All right. Well, well the, the thing we don't do is we don't... Reason with people. We don't, <laughs> no, we don't try to debate. Right? Okay. If you would like to sincerely uh, uh, acquire some other people's knowledge, uh, we... Yeah, you see, uh, of course I understand that they don't try to debate, or they don't debate in the street. It's not constructive for them. They're looking for people... Um, because look, somebody who wants to debate a skeptic is never going to buy into this religion. So it's a waste of time for them to, to debate. It's destructive. It's not going to get them anywhere. So I can see that they just sit back. They wait for the right person to come along in the same way that maybe a snake oil salesman waits for the right person to come along and just buy, you know, buy the snake oil without question. <laughs> That is a very nice offer. I think he's a very polite man. And uh, if he made me that offer, he's, he's offered to sit with Aaron um, somewhere and go through the Bible and explain their beliefs. Actually, I probably wouldn't do that, but um, he's being very pleasant with it all. Okay. Okay, so that's it. I thought that was really interesting. And um, I'm going to be following some more of Aaron's videos. Of course, he's got his own style. We'd all do it differently. But I think it's really good that he's going into the street and he's challenging, he's challenging uh, people on religion. I did see another one that he did where he was in London. And he was debating on the street with a very, very aggressive Christian, uh, you know, a Brit. And this, this Christian was so aggressive with his body language and the way he was using his voice. Uh, I mean, Aaron was really good. I'm going to find that and I'm, I'm going to do a video on it. He was really good. He was just standing his ground. And this guy was getting so close to him. I thought he was being quite threatening. So that's all for now. Let me know what you thought of that. And I'll be back again with another video soon. Bye for now.